Our wisdom story today Come with me is the as we flower travel to Prague, Czechoslovakia, in Europe, the year 1923. There was a Unitarian church. Now the building did not look at all like our church. In fact, it did not look like a church at all. It did not have a tall steeple reaching toward the sky like some churches do. It did not have massive doors carved of wood or windows of stained glass. It did not have a chalice, a piano, or flowers. The church had walls, a ceiling, a floor, a door, a few windows, and some hard wooden chairs. But thankfully, the church had people who came every Sunday, and they were the most important part of the church. Because without people, any church is just a building, no matter how tall its steeple. The people of Prague had been through hard times. They had just recently been through four years of war. Many people in Prague had been divided about the war. Many had lost loved ones or had been hungry or scared. And even though the war had ended, many bad feelings still remained. The church also had a minister. His name was Norbert Chapek. Reverend Chapek had been the minister of this church for two years. Every Sunday he spoke to the people and they listened, sitting quietly on those hard wooden chairs. When he finished speaking, the people talked a little bit among themselves, and then they went home. And that was all. No music, no candles, no food. Now Reverend Chapek, he was a thinker, and he wondered sometimes if there might be something, perhaps just a little something more spiritual. He wrote some songs and the people sang them, and it helped, but something was still missing. The church went on as before. One spring morning near the end of May, as Reverend Chapek was out for a walk, he noticed the birds singing and the flowers blooming and felt the sunshine on his face. How beautiful the world is. And then an idea came to him. The next Sunday, he asked all the people of the church to bring a flower or a budding branch to church the next week. Each person was to bring one. What kind, they asked. What color? What size? You choose, he said. Each of you choose what you like. And so the next Sunday, which felt like the first day of summer, the people came with flowers of all different colors and sizes and kinds. There were yellow and white daisies and red roses, blue asters, dark-eyed pansies, grape hyacinth, pink and purple, orange and gold, all the colors of the rainbow and more. Children helped arrange them and bring them forward to the front of the church. Flowers filled all the vases and beauty filled their hearts. The church wasn't so plain anymore. They had created beauty together. Reverend Chapek spoke to the people and they listened, sitting quiet and still in those hard wooden chairs. Those flowers are like us, he said, different colors, different shapes and different sizes each needing different kinds of care, but each beautiful, important, and special in its own way. He said a blessing of the flowers, which called for everyone in the room to see one another as family, despite differences, and to let the spirit of love unite them and help them live more joyfully. He invited each person to take a flower home with them when they left a different flower than what they had brought. And when the service ended that day, the people turned and talked a little bit more among themselves. And maybe there was some laughter. And then they each <laughs> chose a flower from the vases before they left and took it home as a gift from their church family. And each year at the start of summer, they did this again.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to our annual flower ceremony service. This will be the second time we celebrate this service online because of the pandemic. Although this year we seem to be emerging into a more hopeful phase of this tough time. Like the people in today's story about the first flower communion who are coming out of the pain and difficulty of war, many of us are marked by challenging and painful pandemic experiences, but hopeful that better times are at hand. In preparing for today's service, I thought about a social media meme a friend of mine recently posted, in which one person asks the other what they think the future will bring. Flowers, answers the second person. Why would you think that with so many terrible things going on? Asked the first person. Because I am planting seeds, says the second person. I am hopeful that today we will plant the seeds for the coming year and for our next flower ceremony. We will now pause for a moment of silent meditation as we gaze upon some beautiful blooms. So when you were listening to the wisdom tale told by my colleague, uh, Liza, today, perhaps you thought about where you saw yourself in the story. Perhaps you saw yourself as one of the weary church members, just trying to get through those tough times and about ready to receive some beauty, even though you might not know what you needed. Perhaps you saw yourself as Reverend Chapek, ready to serve others and thinking about how to do that with compassion and creativity. Perhaps you're wondering what's ahead, like the congregants who asked, what kind of flower to bring? What size, what color? Maybe you're like the children who were eager to help and arrange the flowers so that everyone could take a gift home. And I wonder what you think the most important part of the story was. Why was this story written? Was it because of uh, Reverend Chapek's care for his congregation or the springtime walk that inspired him to create the ceremony? Maybe it was his response to the people when they asked what kind of flower they should bring and he said, you decide. Maybe the most important part was when beauty filled the people's hearts or when there was laughter, or maybe it was the gift of flowers. I've heard this story many times. I've even told it a few, so maybe you've heard it before. It's one our children learn in Sunday school, or maybe it's new to you. As a Unitarian Universalist, I see the events and ideas expressed in the story of this church that transcend time and space. We are indeed like flowers, each of us with unique 
needs and gifts, ideas and experiences, certainly. And, each, and yet, each of us is beautiful. Each of us is important and special in our own way. Though Reverend Chapek lived well before our seven Unitarian Universalist principles were written, his, his words foretold our first UU principle, which honors and upholds the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Or as we teach the children, we believe that each person is important. Like the people of Reverend Chapek's church, this year surely we have learned that a church building is not just a building. We have had meetings, Sunday morning services, religious education, sing-alongs, and other events all online this year. We did have in-person labyrinth walks back um, on New Year's Day outside, one in Albany's Lincoln Park and the other in Saratoga Springs. There were outdoor witness events throughout the year, like the weekly Black Lives Matter vigils. Recently, our coming of age youth and mentors have been able to meet outside more comfortably. But mostly, and still this morning, we are creating community online. And for that, we deserve a lot of credit. Maybe like me, the past 14 months of the pandemic has taught you to appreciate plain and simple beauty. Isn't contentment in life really about the simple things? I'm appreciating things in nature. I took lots of walks this winter with friends in all kinds of weather. So I'm especially appreciating the warmer days we've been having, even if the ones recently are cloudy and cold, I know warmer ones are coming. I am particularly attentive to and grateful for the birds singing and flowers blooming, even the rain. And I'm appreciating gentle interactions with people, laughter and informal gatherings now. I have felt the warmth of community. In the story, the people of the church in Prague start to feel a bit like family. But here's what I think. We're not like the people in the story because we're not exactly like a family. Our religious community is more than that. Yes. We come together in the spirit of love to accept each other. And in that same spirit, we also strive to help each other to do better in acting upon our values. So now I want to ask you all something. And in a moment, I'll invite you to put your answers into the chat. Today, we have many different people here, and we have congregants from both the Albany and Saratoga Springs UU congregations. But I have one question for you all. What gifts has your religious community given you? Again, what gifts has your religious community given you? What comes to mind now? Stimulating ideas as a gift, inspiring music, opportunities to learn, to grow, to join with others in social justice actions, a chance to serve others. What are the gifts your congregation, your religious community has given you? I invite you to put your responses in the chat now and I'll read them aloud as best I can. I'm seeing hope, inspiring stories, an opportunity to serve, friends, shared realities, support during tough times, greater meaning, connection with kindred spirits, positive outlook, the gift of deep listening through Wellspring, fun memories, friendships and community, support, when I'm to move forward, when I feel unsure, patience, a sense of belonging, joy, the choir, opportunities for my children to learn, a caring community, for the beauty of the earth, 
belonging and meeting, meaning, togetherness, healing. Hmm. And music. Resonance. <laughs> and all the volunteers. Yes, indeed. So we're about to start the flower communion. So if you have a flower to share, either a real one or a picture or a drawing of one, now is the time to grab that and bring it back to your seat. Here's mine. As many of you know, this year, the children of the Saratoga Springs congregation and the Albany UU congregation had their religious education program together online. Many of them knew the song, From You I Receive, and the hand motions that go along with them from our family chapel. And it was easy enough to teach it to those who didn't. The song, From You I Receive, expresses the mutuality among, among generations and the essence of our flower communion, giving and receiving. We'll start our ceremony by having our children lead us in this short recording that's about to be played. You'll hear the song sung by Randy Rosette two times and see the children doing the hand motions. Then we'll all have an opportunity to give and receive the flowers that at least some of us brought today. So here we go. It's our turn to join in and do the flower communion service while ceremony while we hear Randy sing again. So get your flower and then we will hear the song again. And it'll be a chance for you to hear your flower review. Sure to put your Thanks. Yeah, put your, your view in the gallery view because that way you can see everyone. And like the children showed us, we're going to move our flowers to different parts of the screen as if to share them to different people. And if you don't have a flower, that's okay. You can extend your hands to different parts of your screen to receive the flower from other people. And this will last about two minutes. So now we're ready for that. We made this tricky today, so we're, we're going to get there in one second. Thank you. 
So I have a blessing for us. May hearing the music and looking at the flowers today strengthen our sense of community, our joy, our perseverance, and may the songs we hear and the flowers we will see in the days to come remind us of the beautiful gifts that we will receive. Good morning. My name is Eric Monhausen, and I'll be your service associate and pastoral care associate today. An important way we celebrate life each Sunday is by offering an opportunity to practice generosity. Members and friends support our congregation with an annual pledge paid throughout the year. Another way to support the good works of this congregation is by making a generous contribution via one of the options shown on the next slide. You can click the tiny URL link in the chat window to contribute or you can send a text to the number shown on the screen. The examples on the slide show how to label your text to indicate the amount and the purpose or intent of your gift. We enjoy welcoming guests and visitors to our service. If you are a guest or visitor and you'd like to tell us who you are and where you're from, you can click on the raise hand symbol. Depending on your Zoom version, you will find uh, you'll find the raise hand symbol as an option either in the participant window or under the reactions button on your Zoom toolbar. Our technician will invite you to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. You may also or instead click on the visitor link you'll find now in the chat window. Anybody with a raised hand, John? I don't see anyone. Okay. Thank you and welcome to all who have joined us today. If you'd like to learn more about our congregation or Unitarian Universalism, you can find in the participant window someone with welcome before their name. You can reach out to that person privately in the chat window now or after the service. Hi, I'm Lucy Haber. I'm Jora Cohen. We're just here to remind you that our congregation is considering adopting the eighth principle, which was written by the UUA, and we want to reiterate why it's important and why you should care about it. Lucy's going to read the eighth principle and then I'll describe one key phrase in it. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse multicultural beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. The key phrase for today is dismantle. Despite our best intentions, living in a racist, sexist, classist, ableist society has caused each of us to internalize messages about certain groups of people and to sometimes unconsciously perpetuate systems of oppression in various ways. For those who identify as white, male, heterosexual, or able-bodied, it's likely that you benefit from this oppressive social imbalance. When there's not an explicit commitment to accountably dismantle systems of oppression, the tendency is for systems of oppression to continue to exist as they are and to be perpetuated. The eighth principle is an opportunity to make just such an explicit commitment. Thank you, support the eighth principle. This is the time set aside in our service for sharing personal significant milestones in our lives. There are three ways to share a joy or sorrow. The first option is to type your joy or sorrow into the chat window. Please put the words read aloud at the beginning of your message. If you would like to, if you would like to do us to do that, please also consider connecting privately in the chat with a pastoral care associate. May I identify the ones on duty today in the participant window. Look for the words PCA before their name. Their name. That's just me today. The second option is to click the raise hand symbol found either in the participant window or under the reactions button. Our technician will invite you to unmute yourself and speak your joy or sorrow. The third option is to submit a joy or sorrow using our website on, by noon on Friday prior to the service. We'll start with those, anybody who has uh, their hand raised? John, is there anyone? I don't see a single one. Nope. 
Move ahead. Okay, the following joys and sorrows have been submitted in the chat window. From Tammy Hathaway, I asked for positive thoughts for my niece who broke her arm while visiting us and had to cancel her traveling nursing contract. I don't see any others. For the joys and sorrows that remain unspoken, let us hold all that we've heard and felt in our hearts. For today's prayer of affirmation, I'd like to share with you a bouquet of people by Claire Feingold Thorin. Before we begin, I also wanna take a moment to reflect on poppies, a flower of remembrance for fallen soldiers in honor of Memorial Day tomorrow. Let us take a moment to acknowledge the loss of those who did not get the chance to grow old. Let us give thanks for a bouquet of people. We give thanks for children. Like tulips and iris, they multiply around us, making the world ever more filled with color and beauty and new life. May we bless them as they replant themselves even further from us knowing that they need their own space to grow into. We give thanks for generous friends, as constant in bloom as echinacea, and whose gifts lift up our body and spirit. We give thanks for feisty friends, as indomitable as geraniums, and for continuous friends, who like bittersweet and ivy hold on and never let go, and can never be gotten rid of. For crotchety friends, as prickly as rose bushes, their beauty is secret that is only discovered through careful gardening. For surprising friends who at first seem dour and then blossom into joy as quickly as forsythia. For funny friends, silly as snapdragons, and serious friends, complex as chrysanthemums. For comfortable friends, their gentle presence as soothing as the sweet smell of lilacs. For stormy weather friends who stand by us in hard times, like lily of the valley that cannot be deterred by shade or shadow. For old friends nodding like sunflowers in the evening time and young friends coming on fast as flocks. For friends as unpretentious as dogwood, as persistent as Pachysandra, as steadfast as Azalea. And who, like snowdrops, can be counted on to see you through the winter and remind you that spring always comes for loving friends who wind around us like wisteria and embrace us despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for forget-me-not friends, gone but never forgotten. Their beauty lives on in our memories and our hearts. For this bouquet of people who brighten our lives each in their own way, we give thanks. Amen. Next, we'll sing a unison song. The words will appear on the screen. Please join in singing, Spring Has Now Unwrapped the Flowers. Oh 
As we extinguish the chalice, please join in the words shown on the screen. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. As we conclude our annual flower communion service, I hope you are renewed and uplifted by the plain and simple beauty of our flowers, our sharing, and the gifts we offer to each other as a religious community. May the seeds we have planted in our hearts today inspire us to seek sunshine, grow strong roots, and flower into beauty, strength, and grace all year long. And now Eric will acknowledge the people who made today's service possible. Our thanks to community message, Jura Cohen, Lucy Haber, musicians, Elena Karpoff, Randy Rosette, Chris Jensen, pastoral care associate, Eric Munhausen, service associate, Eric Munhausen, ushers, Tammy Hathaway, Hanukkah Fluger, Jean Poppy, welcomer was Elizabeth Bavarian, technical support, John Newell, office support, Elizabeth Valdez and Tammy Hathaway.